Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the new Unify Switch aggregation. This is an eight port, 10 gigabit switch that is fully managed in your Unify network. If you guys are new here, please hit the subscribe button. Make sure to hit the thumbs up button. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. You'd find us on Instagram at Mac Telecom Networks. If you'd like to support the channel, we have an Amazon store. I'll put that in the description below as well as our Discord server. The first thing I'll get out of the way is, do I need this in my network? And the answer is no. I bought this so I could mess around, do some 10 gig link aggregations between my USW Pro Gen 2 switch as well as connect a few other devices. This switch, it could be used as a distribution switch or like it says, an aggregation switch to have aggregate links in a leg group. The first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna get this unboxed, then we'll go through some of the specs. Then I'll show you guys how I'm gonna mount it into my rack and we'll connect it together and adopt into our Unify network. So let's go ahead and let's unbox it. Okay, here's the USW aggregation switch. I've already ripped the top off here. So let's go ahead and open it up. First thing that comes in the box, I'm gonna assume that's a power supply, but we'll take a look. Okay, so it comes with the racking kit. So these will go onto your rack if you need them. I won't need them, but we will use the screws that are inside it. Comes with your racking ears, which will uh, get taken off because we're gonna have to screw those in. So it comes with two racking ears and then our standard power cord. So this is a lot thinner than I thought it was gonna be. Let's get this wrapping off. Wow, that is a nice looking switch. So, and it's extremely thin. So this will fit in your standard 19 inch rack. At the front here, we have our eight 10 gigabit SFP plus ports. On right beside it, in the bottom right-hand corner, we have a reset button. On the front here, we say it as the USW. This will be the touch panel. And on the back, we have the single power supply. So my first thoughts on this, very small. It's, it weighs a little bit, but it's very nice looking. Um, let's get the rack ears put on here, and then we'll go back to the computer and go over some of the specs. All right, so we'll grab our first rack here and then we'll place it going on the front. You want this part going front ways so that we could screw in our screws into our rack. So let's get these full four screws put in. Okay, and that's it. Now the switch is ready to go in our network rack. Let's go over to my computer and go over some of the specs. Now that we've unboxed our USW aggregation switch, let's see some of the specifics about it. So like I said, it has eight 10 gigabit SFP plus ports. It has 160 gigabits per second switching capacity. Comes with a 1.3 touchscreen with AR switch management. I assume that means the augmented reality management. And this switch is fanless and it's only 4.7 inches deep. The switch will fit in a 1U rack mount and it's managed by the Unify controller. All right, so this will be the new setup of my network. We're gonna have our internet coming into our UDM Pro. From the UDM Pro 10 gig SFP plus port, we'll be connecting to our USW aggregation. From there, we're gonna be hanging all our other switches off of. My USW Pro 24, we're gonna have two connections going back to it, and these will be done in a link aggregation, so it will have 20 gigabit bandwidth throughput. I'll also have a 10 gigabit connection going to my UNVR, and then we'll be having a one gigabit connection going to my USW Lite 16 switch. As you guys could probably tell, this is a single point of failure, so if this switch dies, then our whole network will go down. Typically we would want some redundancy by adding two switches and then having two different ISPs, but I'm not rich. Right now we're just gonna go with the one switch. This is my home office, so if it goes down, nothing critical will be impacted. So let's go down to my network rack, get the USW aggregation switch racked and cabled, and then we'll come back up, adopt it, and then assign some switch port profiles to the switches that need it. So unfortunately my GoPro died, we're gonna have to use my iPhone. I have the USW aggregation on the bottom. Uh, the reason for the gap, we need to bring this fiber cable, which is connecting to my UNVR. 
down into the USW aggregation. And then we'll be bringing our switch connections down as well. Um, and then we'll bring, bring one of these copper connections down to connect the USW Lite 16 PoE, which is upstairs in my office. Okay, so now we have the USW aggregation switch installed and we have it cabled up. Um, I don't have the right size cables for some of these, so it's a bit of a mess right now. But when we redo our rack, we'll get the correct cables. So in here, we have DAC cables, we have fiber optic cables, LC to LC ends, and then we have one copper cable. So we have all our connections, two connections going to the USW Pro Gen 224, which will be in a lag group once we get it created. So one of these will be in a blocking state right now. Um, and then we have this one that's going to my USW Light 16. We have a connection going from my UDM Pro down to the aggregation switch, and then we have a fiber optic cable going to the back of my UNVR. On the front here, this is the uh, LCD panel. Let's go ahead and rip the protective cover off. And it's just showing ports one, two, three, four, and then it's saying that SFP is down for port three, which is fine. Port four is up, port five is up, port six is up at one gig, if you could see that right there and that's to our uh, USW Lite 16. Port seven's up at 10 gig, and then port eight is up at 10 gig. At the front here, we'll click on the top left corner. That just brings us to the ports again. We could look at the throughput of the switch. We could look at the system CPU and memory. If we press the information button, it's gonna tell us the IP address of the switch. It's gonna show us the uptime and it will show us the, the firmware version that's running on this aggregation switch. We press the settings button, we could do the brightness, and that looks like about all. Let's go upstairs, let's get this adopted into our controller, configure this, this link aggregation. Okay, now we're back to my Unify controller and we could see that everything is disconnected besides our UDM Pro, our USW switch aggregation and our USW Lite. So let's get this adopted and hope that everything else comes back up. So I'm gonna click on the Unify switch aggregation and we're gonna press adopt. So this will take a few minutes and we'll be back once it's adopted. There's also a firmware update for the Unify switch aggregation. So we'll go ahead, we'll click the firmware update and we'll confirm. Firmware update is done on the Unify switch aggregation. I moved a couple of the cables around. So our USW Lite 16, I put on port one. Our UNVR is on port four. And then our Mac Telecom switch gen two, which is the USW Pro 24 PoE will be on port five and six. And the reason I do this is for the link aggregation group. I've disabled one of the ports right now so that these would come online as one of them is, was in blocking state and it showed them down within the controller. So let's take a look at the Unify switch aggregation. We could see all eight ports here. The green means it's running at one gigabit and the white means it's running at 10 gigabit. If we had a yellow or amber, it would be running at 10 megabit or 100 megabit per second. You can see all the normal things, the MAC address, the model, the version, the IP address, the temperature of the switch, the uptime of the switch, the memory usage, and the load average. If we click on uplink, it's gonna show us what our uplink is, which is our UDM Pro on port 11 at 10 gigabits per second full duplex. We can take a look at our downlinks, and these are our switches that are down from the Unify switch aggregation. So we have our USW Lite 16, and then we have our Mac Telecom switch. We could look over clients and we could see some of the clients that would be connected to this device. We could look at our ports and we could look at per port insight. This will show us the name of the port if we give it a name, the PoE, the mode, the profile, the link status, the spanning tree protocol if it's forwarding or if it's blocking, as well as some other statistics for the TX and the RX sum. If we go to the config wheel, we could give it an alias. I'll just call it Mac Telecom Ag. The screen, we could use site settings or we could turn it off. The screen brightness, we could override the brightness of the LED screen and the screen timeout. Under services, we could change what management VLAN it's on. We could enable jumbo frames on the switch and flow control. And we could decide which spanning tree we wanna use, if we wanna use rapid spanning tree or just normal spanning tree and give it a priority. We can enable 802.1ax control and under network, we could either configure it by DHCP or we could give it a static IP address. If we go over to tools, we could open up a debug terminal. This will bring us to a command line interface. 
And then under stats, we could see the CPU and memory utilization. So there's a couple things I need to do on the switch. First off, my UNVR, it's in a total separate VLAN than the rest of my networks. So my UNVR is on SFP plus four. I'm gonna click the edit button and we'll call it UNVR. And the switch port profile will be my camera profile and we'll press apply. So now this port is gonna be in VLAN 40. Now we're gonna go ahead and create the link aggregation between my USW Pro 24 PoE and the Unify switch aggregation. So I'll go ahead and I'll click on the Mac Telecom switch gen two. We'll go to ports and then we'll go down to our two SFP ports. This is called UMVR because that's what was plugged in there before. I'm gonna call this uplink to switch ag and we're gonna just put that on the all profile for now. And the profile override, we're gonna go down and we're gonna select aggregate. So we wanna have the aggregate ports from port 25 and 26, and we're gonna press apply. And now on the Unify switch aggregation, we need to do the same. So I'm gonna to go to ports. I'm gonna to go to port five, and then I'm gonna call this gen two switch egg. I'm gonna enable the port and set it to all, then we'll go to profile overrides. If we look at the operation, we're gonna set that to aggregate and it will be from ports five to six. We're gonna auto negotiate the speed and we're gonna press apply. So now this will take a minute for both of these switches to provision. And once they do, we should see both ports are up and active and none are in the blocking state. Now the USW Pro 24 PoE and the Unify switch aggregation have provisioned. We can see here that the two ports connecting to the USW Pro are in non-blocking state. If we click on the Pro switch, we can see here that they're in non-blocking state as well. So that aggregation worked. So there's a 20 gig pipe going between both switches. Right now I don't have two devices with a 10 gig NIC inside of them, so I can't do a proper iPerf test. In about a month, I'll have another device that will have that and we'll do that test and I'll post a follow-up review video on this. I'm really happy with the switch. It was super easy to install. The link aggregation worked flawlessly. I have noticed when I was trying to do link aggregations between a couple other Unify switch that the aggregation would drop, but it hasn't seemed to do this with the USW aggregation. The price point on the switch is $269 US MSRP. And if you're looking for a 10 gigabit switch, I would definitely recommend this to you. If you guys like this video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and I'll try my best to answer it. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.